So now in this video, we're going to look basically at this situation here. So this probably looks odd at first, but what it's doing is it's taking forward biased rectifier diodes going to ground. They're simulating a Zener diode that is reverse bias. So the Zener diode, if you don't know already, blocks a certain amount of voltage. It does not conduct. The uh, rectifier diode also blocks a little voltage when it's forward biased, about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts, and then it starts conducting. Reverse bias, Zener diodes are rated for a certain voltage. So it's going to block that certain voltage. Once it starts exceeding that voltage, current starts passing through as needed to hold the voltage. So the uh, quick answer right here is that this is doing the same thing. A single rectifier diode is probably going to start conducting at about 0.6 volts, maybe 0.7, especially if current is higher. That's about what we'll build up there. A couple of series LED, uh, rectifier diodes, I mean, in series, they're going to double that voltage, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so about 1.2 to about uh, 1.4. And if you got three in series, again, it's three times the voltage drop of a single one. So about 1.8 to 2.1 volts. So now I'm going to test the Zener diode. I really did not know the value when I grabbed it. We have the power supply only providing one volt to the rail right now. It's very important to notice that we're going to limit current to 10 milliamps for this test. And of course, being a Zener diode, the cathode's on the more positive side of the power supply and uh, the anode to the more negative. The cathode is the side with the uh, stripe. So in this case, it's a glass package and they tend to have a black stripe for the cathode. So we have that to the positive rail and then the anode to the negative rail. So again, we got to make sure the current is limited for this test. So this will prevent more than 10 milliamps of current going through the Zener diode. And we are going to raise the voltage that we want to put across the Zener diode. So we want four, we got four, we want five, we got five, and we got six, we do not have six there. So this is probably the uh, 5.1 volt Zener diode that I have. And uh, it says constant current. That is because we will go back to uh, looking at this. You can see that uh, we got about 10 milliamps of current going. So it's lowering the voltage. It's working like a Zener diode for the most part. It's lowering the uh, voltage to hold a current steady. So similar to a Zener, not uh, exactly the same. But in any case, that's one way to uh, quickly test it. Again, make sure you limit current. That is the main takeaway. So now, to actually demonstrate the circuit, all we tested for was the Zener voltage in the last one. I have a 330 ohm resistor there and the 5.1 volt Zener diode right there. The power supply will not go above 10 volts. I'll make sure of that because we're using a 330 ohm uh, resistor. And so the Zener diode is going to actually reduce some of the voltage, about 5.1 volts in comparison of the power supply. In fact, we can probably look at that now. So before we do though, I'm going to raise our current limit to uh, 20 milliamps. That's probably good enough. And there you can see we have about 3 milliamps of current flowing. So we probably do have about the uh, 5 volt Zener voltage across the Zener diode. Let's take a look with the uh, multimeter. So we go to ground and in relationship to ground, there you can see uh, just a bit less than 5.1 volts and it's low current so that is not a surprise. Now we are going to raise the voltage of the power supply again only to about 10 volts. So there you can see we have about 15 milliamps of current approximately. This isn't completely accurate but it's usually within one or two milliamps. So the milliamp is over there. It's one thousandth of an amp is one milliamp. It takes one thousand milliamps to equal an amp. 
if you did not know that already. So there you can see we have practically the same voltage across the Zener diode. So if we put a load parallel to it, which the multimeter was right there, that will also have that voltage because as we saw the multimeter did. As long as it doesn't need too much current. Too much current will pull it down a little bit. But uh, that's just something you have to design for when you come to that. So now we move along to the single diode right there. We can expect a 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volt drop. It depends on the current. The more current, the uh, more voltage it will block. I have the voltage lowered to 1 volt right now. We can go higher, but... Uh, we don't have 5 volts being blocked from the resistor anymore. So I really only want to go about 5 volts higher than what the rectifier diode is going to block. And as we saw it's about 0.6. So this one you can't really see the stripe. So you can see the uh, silver stripe there kind of. That is the cathode right there. So we want the cathode to the negative rail and then the anode to the resistor. The direction that it conducts easily this will block about 50 volts reverse bias probably it's the 1n4001 commonly found in kits uh, but after that point you probably destroyed it so you don't want to do that so let's move this over here we will grab the multimeter really quick and so we only got one volt right now so we expect about 0.6 volts across the rectifier down and there you can see 0.6 pretty much spot on and so there's practically no voltage about 0.4 volts the rest of the voltage across the resistor and uh, so I didn't show that with the Zener down but it's the same principle so 2 volts this is still gonna block probably slightly more than it was before and I did notice that number and there you can see a lot more voltage across the resistor so let's go right to 5 or six let's go to six volts so the uh, rectifier down has about uh, why well, am I not getting there we go so a little bit above seven right there and we got about 16 milliamps of current and so 5.2 volts across the 330 ohm resistor so that's past about 16 milliamps of current so it's probably still okay but it's gonna start getting pretty warm and if we want to block another diode worth of voltage, that resistor was pretty warm. I wasn't thinking about that. We can add another one in series. So again, this is forward bias, not reverse bias like the Zener. But while it's forward bias, it's kind of working like a low value Zener. And we can take a look first at the uh, supply there. And then this would be going to our load. This point there, we had six. Now it's 1.4. So the... Uh, drop of the two of them at about 0.7 volts and of course we're gonna look at three of them one thing I'll note too that I haven't before we had uh, 15 milliamps with just the one now we got 13 because we're blocking more voltage from the resistor and so that's why we could use a higher voltage when we had the Zener because the Zener was blocking about 5 volts from the resistor and so it was only getting about 5 volts across it, about half, because we had a 10 volt power supply. So there we go. We got the uh, three of them in the three LEDs in series. There you can see now we're down to about 11 milliamps of current flowing through the three of them. Everything in series when it comes to current has the same current going through it. So all the power supply has to do is look at how much current it's outputting. Since these are all connected end to end, that same current is going through them. So pretty straightforward and we will see that we have about uh, 2.1 volts across here once I get a good connection. There we go, about 2.1 and of course the rest of the voltage is across the uh, resistor. So a little less voltage, that's why there's a little less current. The, the resistor is setting the current based on the voltage across it. The dials are just dropping some voltage. But in any case if we tap into that point and have a load or something, then as long as it doesn't draw too much current, it's going to have about 2.1 volts to work with. So, hope that all made sense. Hope you enjoyed the uh, video. I think every time I see somebody show this uh, basic setup somewhere, 
along uh, in their uh, circuit, people ask, what, what is that for? So hopefully that clears it up because usually you don't really get taught that. Somebody just throws it in and uh, mentions it. So hopefully that all makes sense. Check out one of these other videos. Make sure you click subscribe. I'm going to turn the meter off and the power off. Make sure you do that. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.